Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. My grandmother lived with us growing up, and she had some pretty hilarious adages that she would bring up out of nowhere, especially when she was surprised or caught off guard. One of my favorites was this. Holy cow in the stable with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And I've got to tell you, I'm feeling a little like that today. Because how in the world is this the first Sunday in Advent? And I say that with full knowledge, mind you, that this is the absolute latest point at which the season of Advent can actually begin. And still, it feels like it came on quickly. Speaking of quickly, the Christmas season is approaching, and in the hustle and bustle of the holiday rush, we may be feeling the pressure to move ever more quickly in an attempt to keep up with our consumer culture. But, as we've been reminded since All Saints Sunday, just a month ago, we have been set apart. And to that point, Last Sunday, we celebrated the reign of Christ and the kingdom of God over kingdoms of this world with our sanctuary that was adorned in white and gold. And our hymns rang out in shouts of praise for our God, whose reign is above all powers on earth. And characterized then by richness in mercy, abounding in steadfast and selfless love. And here we are today, beginning a new season we call Advent. Now for those who may be new to the seasons of the church year, Advent is celebrated during the four weeks leading up to Christmas. It's a time when we dress the church in blue, traditionally related to the hopefulness that Christ brings into our lives, and to represent Mary, the mother of God made flesh in Jesus. We light the candles on our Advent wreath, one for every week, until all the lights shine brightly as one. The center candle is reserved for Christmas, the season following Advent, when we light a special candle to celebrate the birth of Christ among us, in our lives, and in our world. As you may have noticed when you walked in this morning, or maybe you were part of the process with the church elves who have diligently trimmed the tree and hung the greens, our devoted altar caregiver Jerry has hung the banners and prepared the advent wreath. The nave has been transformed with expectant hues of royal blue. Even the colors of our stoles correspond. And our gospel takes a significant shift as well. From Jesus' parables in Matthew about what the kingdom of God is like, to his emphasis in Mark's gospel on keeping awake. For those of you more familiar with pop culture and modern language, I may be speaking directly to the students among us. This phrase, keep awake, is most closely related to the newly familiar coined phrase, stay woke. More than a phrase, but a movement, actually, inspired by Black Lives Matter, which is lifted up to emphasize what it really means to pay attention. So I wonder, what is it that keeps you awake or woke this morning? Well, a number of things help me stay woke. Coffee is one of them. And you know what? I had a great conversation with one of our students. His name is Jackson this week at choir rehearsal. And we were talking about Starbucks and how it's quite possible that we may be addicted. Nothing tastes quite like it in my mind. And there are times that I have admittedly become dependent on my coffee to be alert, focused, mindful of my surroundings. So. Sometimes coffee keeps me up at night. There's something else that keeps me awake. Here it is. 
my iPhone. Studies have shown that caffeine and social media, email, and any sort of screen time can activate our senses and keep us awake. Yet a different kind of study helps us consider the themes in Scripture for today. Matthew's Gospel, Isaiah's prophecy, and the psalm in particular that we read remind us of something much deeper, something life-changing, something that is already and is still to come that Jesus calls our attention to when we hear these words. When I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. After all, Jesus is, is he not, in essence, a countercultural witness to the way life is intended to be lived. Because here Jesus is not talking about wakefulness in terms of restlessness. When he says, keep awake, he's talking about awareness. What are you most aware of this morning? Maybe it's the fact that your stomach is growling and you can't wait to eat breakfast. Or maybe you should have had that second cup of coffee. Perhaps you're mindful of an upcoming test or exam or an important project at work. Maybe you're thinking about all of the stuff you want to get done after worship today or the goals that consume your week ahead or even the scores of the games. So let me ask you plainly. What brings you here today? My sense is that there's something more that you're seeking, a feeling of longing in our hearts for something deeper, something even more powerful than the way of the world. And we come together in Advent to experience a divine love that relates to us, that comes down to us, that fills our hearts and our minds with comfort instead of shame, with joy instead of sadness, and with faith that conquers fear. One of my mentors in ministry and the pastor who I trained most closely with in seminary is Heidi Newmark of La Iglesia Luterana Trinidad, Trinity Lutheran Church in New York City. She's authored a couple of theological books, and in her commentary on the season of Advent, she writes that probably the reason she loves Advent so much is that it's a reflection of how she feels most of the time. She says, I might not feel sorry during Lent when the liturgical calendar begs repentance, I might not feel victorious on Easter Sunday when we celebrate Christ's victory over death. I might not feel full of the Spirit on Pentecost, but during Advent, I always feel in sync with the season because Advent unfailingly embraces me. There's this word in Spanish pronounced angelo, which means longing. Advent is a time when the church is longing for God to burst into the world, to create comfort, peace, and joy, so much so that we can no longer contain this unfulfilled desire. And so the cry of angelo bursts forth, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, O come, O come, Emmanuel. One of the most unique blessings of Advent seems to be this very assurance that God hears our concerns on our hearts and indeed listens and sends God's self in the form of Jesus, who is the light that obliterates our darkness. And so I want to ask again, what keeps you awake? There is so much to be aware of today. 
from our family dynamics at home to situations of injustice near and far. There are relationships that need to be mended, forgiveness that needs to take place. There are people who need to be clothed and fed and cared for here in Lansing. Children who need to be loved in Aleppo. Slaves, still today, who need to be freed in Libya. And prayers that long to be answered on our hearts. The temptation may become to hear the readings for today and consider our world and then focus our energy, our awareness, on the end times, on the darkness. But Advent is our sure and certain reminder that we are people not of darkness, but of light. And we follow a promised star this season, which literally means the season of Advent the coming of a time to celebrate our God who came down in the form of Jesus, who is already and is coming as the light of the world. Now is not a time to become complacent. Now is the time to become increasingly aware of God's present and future hope among us. Simply put, Advent is God's reply to those who are carrying heavy burdens, who have come to God in prayer and supplication, concerned for the future, and who are longing for God to live among you. On this first Sunday in our church year, we remember just how counter-cultural we are called to be, that when we long for God, Instead of turning ourselves inward with our faces toward the ground, we're called to turn ourselves toward the sun with arms wide open, watchful, and prepared to receive the most wondrous gift of all. Jesus reassures his followers then and right now that there will be signs of hope for you. The day and hour we simply do not know. So don't give up. Stand up and raise your heads. Stay woke. Keep watch. For something truly extraordinary is about to happen. Amen. <laughs>